So now let's go and create the main controls for the Verdude character. So this will start with another uh, delete joints node, and the goal will be to focus on a small subset of joints to create these controls. So we wire that in, set the display flag, and we're going to select the joints we want to keep. So we're going to use the select button here. Uh, this will allow us to go in and select the COG, the pelvis, uh, the fur dude main, and the two heels, and then press enter. Now that deletes the ones we selected, but we can say delete non-selected, and now we have the joints that we wanted. Now the hierarchy relationship between them isn't what we want, what we need right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a parent joints uh, node here. And this will allow us to create a better relationship between the different parts. So we're going to start by essentially selecting the two heel joints and parenting those to the fur dude main. And this creates a better hierarchy for us to work with. Since we do don't want the, the, the heels to be parented to the COG, we want them to be independent of that. So once we have that, we can wire that into a rig pose node here. Now the rig pose node doesn't have anything on it right now, but what we can do is we can select all those joints and then they will appear uh, on that rig pose. And we'll be using those to promote those up and allowing us to move and manipulate them. So the next thing we want to do is set the display flag on the bone deform and it's not looking very good. <laughs> Things seem to have gotten a little mangled. Well, the reason for that is we need to blend what we've just created back into the original skeleton. So what we're going to do is take the skeleton um, into there. We're going to then wire that in. Now, just to make sure this is good, we're going to go world position, and we're going to make sure this weight goes to 1, and then that will give us what we're looking for. There we go. So now that fixes everything. So whenever we branch something off that we want to have control over, we've got to blend that back in uh, with what was there before. So we're going to save the digital asset. And as you can see, those joints are now available um, on the other side on the test geometry or the test rig. But they still aren't something that we can manipulate. And the reason that is is we, you know, we haven't promoted the parameters yet. But, you know, we can get to that and, and explore that as an option. Um, in the meantime, what we want is a, a better way of selecting some of these. So what we're going to do is put a circle down. We're going to put it in the ZX direction. Uh, we're going to put a 0 0.2 as its uh, radius. And we're going to create 36 uh, divisions. And we're going to make it an open arc, so there's no surface. It's just the curve. Now we're going to use this to create handles for the different joints. So we're going to feed that into a color node, and we're going to make that yellow. And then we're going to put a merge pack node down. And we're going to feed that into there, and we're going to call this first one color underscore control. So this gives us our main sort of handle that we're going to use for the various joints. So we're going to press tab, attach joint geometry. And what this is going to allow us to do is feed that into the second input. And now we can attach that circle to different joints. So we can select all the joints here. And once we have those, uh, we can then assign shapes. So we choose the assign shapes. And then we middle click, or we press G and scroll with the middle click to select, to assign basically a circle to each one of those. Then we can tweak shapes, and we can, let's say, select these two here, press G, 
and then we press E to scale, and we can scale those from the center down to the size that we want. There we go. So we can use the same circle to all the joints, and then each one can be tweaked to do what we need it to do. So we can scale all the other ones down even more. And we can take these two, for instance, and scale them smaller. And you can even, at this point, once you've got those where you want them, uh, you can then just go to, go to the rig pose. And then you can see how selecting on each one of these um, control geometries will allow you to get access to the joint. So that's how uh, these do their job. So we're going to edit properties, and this is where we're now going to take the parameters off the rig pose and begin to promote them up. Now there's some things locked here, so let's just uh, unlock the transform and unlock the scale and just make sure they're all open. Because we're going to lock some of them, but we want to do it together and uh, see which parameters need to be locked and which don't. So if we look at the fur dude main, we're going to lock the scale. We're going to keep translate and rotate. And we're going to ro uh, drag those two things over. So translate, we'll call this main translate. And the rotate, we'll call main rotate. Perfect. And if we accept that, what we've done is we've promoted two of those parameters to the top level. Now if we go to here and we jump to here, we're going to see that that, that main, there's a couple parameters there, and we can now move and rotate that. So we've, we've added the ability to work with that. So even though the, the test shot rig is locked, because we promoted the parameters, the handles are available, we're able to work with them. So we can continue doing that. So if we go to the rig pose, we can again bring up the type properties for that, so the asset properties. And we can continue adding parameters uh, from the rig pose node over here and using those to further create our main controls. So again, we'll lock scale on the COG and we'll bring COG translate and rotate over and name them accordingly. So we'll go COG translate and COG rotate. So whatever you want the animator to have access to, you promote it, and then it becomes available to them. If you don't promote it, they won't be able to touch it. This gives the rigger control over how the interaction is going to happen with the rig. Now in the case of the pelvis, we only want rotate. So we lock the translate and the scale, and we've only brought the pelvis rotate over. And for the heel, uh, we're going to lock scale for the two heels. Uh, but we will bring translate and rotate because we might want to do both with the with the foot. So, so in this case, we need to do the left heel and the right heel. So we'll call this left heel translate and left heel rotate. And similarly, we can do the right heel both translate and rotate. So, right heel, translate, and right heel, rotate. So these are like extra steps that you have to do to prepare your rig, to get it ready, to hand it off to an animator, uh, but by doing so you have very good control over uh, what gets animated on the creature. And then the animator can give you feedback if they need more control or they need another handle or they need another control. Then there can be a dialogue with that. Now, don't worry how it looks right here. We'll organize this later. But right now, if we go back to the test geometry, you can see all the different parts that we have access to. Now, the heels currently don't do anything. Uh, they're not wired up to everything else. So we'll get to those in a bit. Um, but the most important thing is all those bits are available. Um, on the test rig, which means they can be animated by the animator. So now we're going to take all these little bits that, that we just created, organize them, bring this one up a little bit, 
And then, just like we did before, uh, let's put all of this into a network box to help organize it. So just keep tweaking. And, nope, oh, there we go. Select all of those, network box, and we'll call this main controls. Again, if somebody else is looking at your network, 